With so many dangerous predators, many of the plant-eating dinosaurs would need to protect themselves using the gifts that God had given them for each different species. Stegosaurus, for example, has bony plates on his back and spikes on his tail. When God was creating the Stegosaurus, he made the plates be upright and staggered them from the animal's neck to halfway of his tail, which is near the spikes. Each of the spikes on his tail are one meter long. The largest back plate is 2.5 feet high. As paleontologists took a close look at each of these plates, they've discovered that they're hollow as a honeycomb. God made them for display by flushing blood into his place to change their colors to threaten off predators and rivals and attract a mate. God might have also made the plates to be used as temperature regulators and would be used in almost a similar way as to how the Amargosaurus, Dimetrodon, and Adaphosaurus use their sails. What's also amazing about Stegosaurus is that he has the smallest brain of any dinosaur. God made his brain the size of a walnut and it weighed 2.5 ounces. God didn't give the Stegosaurus a lot of teeth, but he did give him a very powerful beak to mouth to crop vegetation. Stegosaurus has four strong legs. The back legs are twice as long than the front legs. Due to how God positioned the Stegosaurus' whole body, the Stegosaurus couldn't feed off of trees. Instead, Enos can would feed on any type of vegetation that grows on the ground. Fossils have shown that Stegosaurus didn't live in herds. They are usually solitary, which means they live alone, except when they have to mate, of course. But this can be dangerous, however. Stegosaurus can be vulnerable to predators that are as big or bigger than himself. The Stegosaurus doesn't realize that he's being watched by a carnivorous member of the Theropods. Probably just the wind. But it's not the wind. It's a predator with blade-like teeth that are four inches long. It has a strong S-shaped neck that helps the jaws tear off chunks of flesh. And it's as famous as T-Rex. Allosaurus, a huge theropod with bony red crests above the eyes. The Stegosaurus prepares for battle and begins to flush blood into his plates, creating a threatening display of color. But the Allosaurus is hungry and he's desperate for a meal. The Allosaurus goes for the throat, which that's the usual target. But God had put lots of small rounded bones called ossicles under his neck to protect it like chainmail. The Allosaurus uses his other gifted weapon. His arms are strong and has three long hook-like claws. Originally, God made them to help the Allosaurus eat plants. But now that he and his kind are carnivores, he would use them to attack and kill prey. The Allosaurus hooks his claws on the Stegosaurus' side and opens his mouth very wide to take a massive bite. The Allosaurus is wounded, but he failed to kill the Stegosaurus. When attacking prey, many Allosaurus would get injured by those they attacked and some injuries can get infected. God knew that someday his creations would get injured a lot someday, and hospitals or animal cares weren't invented yet 6,000 years ago. Which is why he gave most animal species antibiotics in their bodies to help heal their injuries. The Stegosaurus will recover too thanks to God putting antibiotics in him. Stegosaurus is the first member of his group to be discovered, which is why his dinosaur group is called the Stegosaurids. Stegosaurus is the largest and most famous member of the group. Kentosaurus is the next well-known member. 
Unlike Stegosaurus, God put spiky-like plates on her neck and back and had double roll of sharp spikes on her tail and even on her shoulders. This makes her be almost invulnerable from being attacked from behind. However, she may not be safe from larger predators due because she's smaller than Stegosaurus, which is why her kind would have stayed together in herds. Together, the herd forms a great wall of spikes. Even though Kentrosaurus eats low-lying vegetation, God might have strengthened her back legs to be able to rear her up to reach and eat in the trees. Kentrosaurus had a very tight turning radius, which means she could turn around quickly. There were over 900 Kentrosaurus bones discovered in the African country of Tanzania. Even before the Great Flood, Tanzania might have still been lush with food for the animals to eat. The Kentrosaurus enjoys eating these yummy plants. Around her are other animals being attracted to this fresh greenery. Strange mammals like these Ancylotheriums. Like the Kentrosaurus, their fossils were also found in Tanzania. Despite their appearances, Ancylotheriums are not primates, a mammal order that includes apes, monkeys, and lemurs. Ancylotherium belongs to the Parasodactyls, aka odd toed ungulates. It's a mammal group that includes the species of rhinos, tapirs, and horses. The horse may be the Ancylotheriums' closest cousin because their skulls are most similar. But they're not horse ancestors because God made all the species of animals to be after their own kind. These are very bizarre creations because God gave their feet toe-like hooves or claw-like hooves. Hesperosaurus does almost look like his cousin Stegosaurus, but he's a bit smaller. His back plates are a good way to compare him with Stegosaurus. While Stegosaurus's plates were made tall, Hesperosaurus's plates were made wider. God gave the back plates for all the Stegosaurus species different uses such as for display, for defense, and even as a temperature regulator, or maybe even all three. Also, God made each of the plates different, not only for the different Stegosaurus species, but the species themselves. Each back plate is unique like a fingerprint. This helps them identify their own individual member. It's kind of like how you would recognize someone that you know by their looks. God gave most of the Stegosaurus species plates, and as they were being discovered, most of the species were also given tricky names to pronounce, like to Yangosaurus. She does almost look like her cousin Kentrosaurus, but she has bony plates on her neck to halfway of her tail just like her other cousin, Stegosaurus. But unlike Stegosaurus, God made two Yangosaurus' plates to be small, arranged in pairs, triangle-shaped, and were probably too weak to be used to fend off predators or use it as a temperature regulator. However, the plates can be used to identify other individual two Yangosaurs, since God made the plates on each of the two Yangosaurs differently by their size and arrangement. Her plates may be useless when battling a predator, but she was gifted with four sharp spikes, which are also called the Thagomizer. With it, she can defend herself and her babies from predators. All the babies of the Stegosaurus species don't have their spikes or plates as long or as sharp as the adults, but they will once they are adults. For now, these babies are very energetic, just like other kinds of babies. Lexovisaurus. Not much is known about him other than that his fossils were found in England. Riding on his back are Colobus monkeys, a species of monkey that still exists today, and are also one of God's beautiful animal creations. Some small animal species would rely on the protection of plant-eating dinosaurs and other larger animals to be safe from predators, because there were a lot more dangerous predators 6,000 years ago than there are today. Small animals would either ride or follow the larger animals in order to stay safe. The Lexophosaurus would help transport the Colobus monkeys from one tree to the next to find food for both the monkeys and for himself. Huayangosaurus Unlike their Stegosaurus cousins, God gave them teeth at the front of the upper jaw and not a beak-like mouth. Also, God made the Huayangosaurus' skull short and broad, which is another unusual feature among Stegosaurus species. The back plates are tall and spike-like, but they are not as sharp as the Thagomizer. The plates and spikes are useful for display and defense for all the Stegosaurus species, but there can be a disadvantage. With all this on their backs, 
It's difficult for them to scratch, even on their sides for the species who have shoulder spikes. But according to the Bible, God made sure that all his creations were made very good. So God might have designed something in their bodies to help the Stegosaurus not be so itchy. This is why Yangosaurus enjoys a natural shower under a waterfall, another way to overcome itching. Also, smaller animals like lizards and birds would eat bugs that would be around the Stegosaurus' backs. Some species of birds and lizards would still be doing this with other animals today, including crocodiles and lions. What if God didn't just make the Stegosaurus a stegomizer for weapons? If so, how could the Stegosaurus use them for tools? Here we have Werosaurus looking up at an apple tree. God made it and all the other species of plants that are either extinct or are still existing today since day 3. God didn't give the Werosaurus the strength to rear up or made his neck long. But the Werosaurus was given a long tail with four tall spikes at the end. With it, he can smash or hit the branches and apples off the trees. Now that is golden delicious. The Werosaurus and other Stegosaurus species could use their spike tails to cut other species of plants other than trees to help reach and eat them. Unlike other Stegosaurus, God made the Werosaurus' bony plates to be more rounded or flattened. Werosaurus also has the widest hips of any Stegosaurid. And the reason why is because God gave the Werosaurus a wide belly in order to eat a lot of food and fuel his body. The Stegosaurids have the smallest number of species of all the other dinosaur groups. Around 17 species of Stegosaurids have been discovered so far. This is Chialingosaurus. She's the smallest species of the Stegosaurids. Very little is known about her kind. But she does have bony plates on her back and they do look similar to Stegosaurus's back plates. And she does have spikes on her tail and shoulders for defense. Due to God making her small, Chialingosaurus would stay together in herds to be safe from predators. Now that she quenched her thirst, the Chialingosaurus goes back to rejoin her herd.